Well, hi and welcome to my beautiful office. Today, we're talking about action cameras and why I use them for and reviewing the Action 4. This is the original Osmo Action camera. I got this for doing blogging for my YouTube channel because they are fun. We're not setting them up like we are with our professional cameras to, for me anyway, filming wildlife. I have to get the best detail and the most out of them. But for when I'm going on adventures and I take you with me, the action cameras are the best way to go. Now because I only have to set them up a little bit, so it's set and forget how I like the image to be, and then that's it for the rest of its life. It just stays that way. So that means when I'm out on the trails and I want lots of B-roll, I'll do it because it, it's fun, quick, simple. Put it down on the ground or inside a log, up in a tree, wherever it is, and it only takes a couple of seconds. So I'm more keen to use it and have much more B-roll for a much better video. So that's why I have them for. The story behind me upgrading to the Action 4 is because the original I took it on a six day hike over to Tassie on the overland track. On about the third day, I jumped into a creek to have a wash, freezing cold water. It was beautiful on a hot day. I used it in the water and under the water. But when I was returning to the campsite, I put it in my pocket. So steam built up on the inside of the lens and it just won't go away. So as soon as it gets to a certain type of um, you know, humidity, it starts to appear and also I'm seeing some effect with this on the colour of the image as well so something's happening to the sensor. I don't know really what's going on but anyway I had to upgrade. Now I, I do not like the two and the third version of the Osmo Action Camera. As soon as I saw the Action 4 come out and I listened to all the reviews and waited for the hype to die down I thought yeah this will do me. And one of my complaints with the original, well, there was two complaints, and uh, when I did a review on this, I aired my grievances and what I would like in the next version. So here's what I said. Now, is there anything I'd like to see changed on the Osmo if they make another version? Well, of course there is. I want that headphones jack. I want to have audio control. If they want to put a bigger sensor in there and give us even better quality, I ain't going to complain about that neither, even if they make it slightly bigger to accommodate that. So the Action 4 resolves those problems. We can control the audio and also uh, headphones. I can't work out just yet how to turn it off from being a mic. It's, I talk into it, it works. You can see it being a microphone. But how do you get it to go to being... Um, Headphones. I can't work that out just yet. So we'll move on now to actual testing that I've done in very, very bad lighting in the forest with thick overhead clouds. And then also looking at you know a little bit better day. So it's still overcast. Perfect lighting conditions to check out the low light capabilities of this camera. How clean is it in auto mode? That's what I have it set to at the minute auto exposure so it's horrible horrible in my office dark thick clouds overhead it's raining storms are rolling through you couldn't get it any worse lighting conditions in the middle of the day at the minute yes it's all in automatic hopefully it's doing a reasonable job and we can continue just doing this but otherwise I would much prefer to take control so that's what i'm going to do now i'm going to set the iso or i'm going to limit the iso to 800 and then i'm going to take it up and we'll see what the limit is with artifacts and noise and crap in the background well this is 800 iso how is it performing this is what my original action osmo action camera was set to if I went any higher with the ISO it was horrible we've moved up to 3200 ISO how is this performing we have reached 6400 ISO well it's another day it's still overcast 
but it's a little bit brighter than it was the other day. I've changed some things on the exposure and that and whipbeds just beside me. So what I've done is I'm leaving it in normal. That's what I've been doing from the start. Normal colour profile. Just to check it out and see how whether it's a usable item or not. Everybody says it is. I didn't like what was going on with it. It's over sharp for me. So I brought the sharpening down by one. I've set the ISO to 1600 because I didn't check it out the other day. I've turned low light enhancement off just to see where this makes a difference. I've had it on all the time. Who knows, it might be interfering, making more noise during the daytime. I've set the white balance to manual. So we're 5,400 Kelvin. I have total control over the exposure. So what's it like now going through the forest? Is this the best option for me to do? <sighs> Who wants to stuff around? It's supposed to be, you know, set and forget, but is this going to work better? So between the two with noise, they're pretty much the same. Uh, this original is just slightly softer, even though it's the same noise, it just looks slightly softer. And when it's really bad lighting conditions, a bit like the GoPro it suffers from, and that is the skin goes devoid of detail and you get this pink patchy look about it on the GoPro, like the whole face will be like someone's painted on to the image, pink and it just looks horrible and you instantly see that it's a GoPro. This one never did that, it just had artifacts and you know patches of crap in the background and on me. But with this one I'm getting pink cheeks. <laughs> so probably stick to 800. Totally different when we have a little bit better lighting conditions. All of a sudden, you know, just on a it's still an overcast day but it working really well. And with the original, it would struggle. You'd see artifacts and things like that. So what I'm seeing with this is a thousand ISO would be perfect by the looks of it. 1600's just that little bit too much. You get grain in the background, which it's not ideal, but it's not you know completely horrible. Uh, but going any higher than that, yeah, definitely is just a waste of time. And I'll be, because I can't use the in-between settings from 800 to 1600, I'd have to use the 1600. I'd yeah, love to be able to have those extra little you know, increments in between. Well, let's put these side by side um, in you know, normal colour profiles and in the uh, more professional colour profiles and see how um, they all compare, even though this is a little bit out. This is a side-by-side -side comparison with the original Osmo action camera on my left. We're going to see the differences between the two as far as image quality goes. Now they are set up totally different than each other as far as exposure, uh, colour profiles, all those things and I'll put them up here how I have them set up. But I just want to know the differences between the two as far as image quality goes. I'll just point out something that I'm seeing now that I've for the first time put them side by side. The monitors are different as well. The original Osmo has a much bigger front screen than the new one. It, but it is smaller, it's noticeably different. So they're both the same now, so both in standard, so that means colour, uh, sharpening, everything's been added in camera rather than me mucking around. Another side-by-side -side comparison, being a bit fairer to the Osmo Action 1. Uh, using the EV, I've gone minus 1.7. So just seeing the difference between the two, yeah, looking at the dynamic range side of it as well, I guess, how much of my forehead is blowing out or not blowing out in standard mode. And I'm also checking out the lavalier kit now that I have the proper dongle for it. It's working now and we're just checking out the audio levels. 
Another quick side-by-side -side comparison. The original with semi-D-like picture profile and the four with the new version of that, which is D-Log M. Another test in bad lighting conditions with both cameras, whoops, both cameras side by side. This is just really checking out what my skin looks like with both cameras in the same setting and that is standard. I have reasonable lighting at the minute. This is how I film at nesting box number two. Let's check out the quality with a normal color profile. Well, the sun's come back out so we can test out the D-Log picture profile. So normally I would not shoot in standard mode. With the original Osmo, it just didn't look very good. So D semi like was how I used to use this camera. Going into Premiere Pro to make my videos, I already had um, color profiles there ready to go. So it was just quick and efficient, just drop them on. But with this, I can't do that because my version of Premiere Pro doesn't have the Kodaks for this. So you go from H264 to H265 if you move away from standard. So also if you're doing um, slow motion, any other things like that, you go to H265. So I can't use that. I can convert them and make them, uh, you know, still the same quality with the 10 bit and everything with the converter I have on my computer. But that's an extra step I don't want. These are supposed to be fun, non fuss that standard mode is really good and helps me to stay lazy and, and be quick and efficient when I'm editing. So I'm keeping it in standard mode unless you know, the situation calls for me to take total control of everything on the camera. But normally that's the way it's going to be. Standard for this one, uh, when I'm uh, giving this to my grandchildren which i have been doing then they can really go for it now i don't care what they do with it uh yeah semi d like grade it later on it's easy let's test out the zoom capabilities of the action 4. this is normal and we'll zoom in to 1.5 and all the way to two times and i'm doing this in real time which is good that we can access tools as we go along while we're still recording. Unfortunately, when we're zooming in, we're losing picture quality. We start to see the imperfections of the, the camera. So it's not a good thing to do zooming in it. Yeah. Uh, the picture just gets uh, less sharp and you see the artifacts, you see the problems. Let's have a look at the action for we're taking photographs. It's not something I'd ever do with this one, but would this be a viable option for a quick snap if I wanted to use it for when I'm just, yeah, talking to the camera, uh, going on adventures? So standard de-warp is definitely what I'd be using if I want to take a photograph. Uh, yeah. The wide's too warpy and it's too wide. Also, when we look at where the focus point is, it's right near the end of my lens. Quite sharp from where you turn the lens, so from the black rubber at the end to the end, it's quite sharp and then it deteriorates through. So let's um, have a look at using the zoom tool with photograph.
So again, it's not very good. We lose detail and you can see the faults of the, <laughs> of the camera. Uh, yeah, just only focusing near the end of the lens and uh, the subject that's right in the background, yeah, it's definitely not sharp. So yeah, zooming, not an option for me. Voice command on the original was 90% really good. The other 10%, it'd ignore me, wouldn't work. Certainly really, really handy in certain types of conditions, especially like when it come out in freezing cold and you got gloves on, rather than take them off and try and press the button, just talk to the camera and it'll do what you want. With the new one, with the small rig cage on that I have, it won't work. I take it off and I can get it to work sometimes. Yeah, it's just not as good as this. And I've had a look through the menus and everything, trying to find out what's going on. And um, it's nothing else there for me to do. <laughs> so voice command, you can't re rely on it at all. I can't get it to work properly, with, especially with this cage on. Just testing out the action for on the water in my inflatable canoe seeing how good it is with stabilization the bracket that i've made for the original it's a lot lighter and with the small rig cage on i had to use it it's heavier so that my bracket's just wobbling around a bit so is that causing a jello effect we will find out uh, but just generally doing this hopefully it's really good now i'm in standard de warp mode that gives me a 14 millimeter lens equivalent where the Action 4, uh, sorry, crazy. The original Osmo is about 18, 19, something like that. And because I have to have the bracket up close to me so I can press the buttons and do things with the camera, it's gotta be up close, just in reach. You're seeing less of the boat, but now we should be seeing a hell of a lot more, that is for sure. Much better distance away for blogging while I'm in my canoe. Now, voice commands. I updated the new latest firmware and things have changed. I now have three things that it'll listen to me and with, I'll put them up here because I won't say them because it'll do it. So with the first one, uh, it's pretty instant. You don't have to tell it twice. But we've take, taken those and uh, might have to yell at it a couple of times before it gets going. Uh, and um, that one, it's, you know, once or twice. So it's a, getting better. It's good for the canoe. You know, I don't have to continuously reach out to the camera anymore to get it to do that. So yeah, uh, just, uh, it's good now, it's good. So yeah, I think uh, that's all I've got to say for the minute. Osmo, stop recording. Stop recording. Now what are my gripes with the camera? Well, the only one I could really, really be, you know, picky on is the buttons are so hard. It's just a pain. Constantly, because of the voice command, I can't use it, having to press that really hard button, and the same on the side. Friggin' annoying. So that's my big gripe. And when it comes to audio, this has been pretty good. You know, I bought a little dongle thing that goes on the side, and uh, all the things that I've bought all have worked with it fine. And when it came to this one, you had to buy this extra little adapter so that we could use the 3.5 jacks because most of my stuff has them fittings. So that's the little mini mic from Rode. But when it came to this one, oh man, what a lot of faff faffing around. Dongle thing that fitted on the side of here, well adapter, they're not compatible. So I saw that we had to buy one of these uh, connectors so we could go to that 3.5 jack. Ran into a problem. I saw one online that suited me, bought it, nothing would work. None of my microphones 
would work on it. I looked online, one of the videos said that, uh, ah, <laughs> you have to buy the right lead. If you don't get the right one, it won't work. I looked at what I had and what he, he had. It's the same brand, but this is K7, the one that I have. Maybe, maybe, I'm going to waste some more money here, but maybe it's because it's the wrong type of unit, you know, even though it's identical looking to this. So I bought K4 version of it, like he had. Yeah, everything works with the microphones that I have. So what are my final thoughts on the Action 4? When we get into bad light, you know, it's thick overhead clouds, don't even bother bringing it out just like I did with the original. But when it gets a little bit brighter, it's still overcast, perform really well at least 10 percent to maybe even 15 percent better than the original so where i wouldn't bring it even worry about using it the old one i'd definitely be using the action 4. when we get into much better lighting conditions like i did when i was out canoeing beautiful morning light streaming onto me wow did it perform i wasn't expecting it to be that good so you could use it in both picture styles and get fantastic results. At least a solid 20% better image than I'm getting out of this one when it was new. I also tested out slow motion. It was fairly bright though. Wow, did it perform well. Just as good as it does when it's in normal filming mode. And hyperlapse, I was really surprised. 1080p, that's all it'll do. It won't do 4K. It performed on the same day just as good when it comes to taking photographs. When I took that shot of myself out on the water on that beautiful light, wow, <laughs> what a fantastic image. But that goes with any camera, doesn't matter how cheap or expensive they are. Getting a good light, you'll always get reasonable results. Now with audio, we get really good sound out of these two, except for when we have wind up high in the trees and you know traffic noise is a little bit away from us it does get a, a much distorted sort of a noise and it's not always good to listen to so the lavalier kit is always my go-to to cut out those sort of things but as we've been going along that's been happening and you may have heard it so my overall opinion is it's a fantastic upgrade for me over the original action camera well i hope you enjoyed this video my personal opinion on the Action 4 and looking at the original as well. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel and get more of this amazing stuff, click on my pretty little faces down there in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Hit the little bell, you'll get notification whenever I do anything else. And if you give me the thumbs up, man, oh, it just helped my channel to grow big time. Uh, people just forget to do it, I think, and that's why my channel is still a little baby. So it'd be great if you could help me out with that. If you uh, want to go and have a look at all the other mad and crazy things I've been doing in the past, click on my icon right here at the end of this video. Take it to my channel. I talk about photographing and filming in the forest and open forest environments. I also go on adventures and I always take you with me. And when I buy cameras and camera accessories, I do reviews on them and give you my honest opinion on them. Go and have a browse, there'll be something of interest to you there, I am sure. Now just remember, if you don't do, you don't get. So get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.